Hey guys, this is here bringing you another video. Now, welcome to something a little bit different, but we have done this before. Uh, I think this is a pretty important video, so hopefully you guys like it and comment and give your reactions to it. Uh, because I had a meeting with Riot, so we've actually done this once before, uh, last preseason or last season, I guess. Uh, Riot invited me to be with some of the head devs and chat about the upcoming changes. Um, it, it is worth knowing these aren't debates with riot these aren't to try and change their mind about anything what these meetings are, are is to get the perspective of riot is that they they went over all the changes of preseason a lot of things of me recording this you guys haven't even seen uh i by the time this video comes out i'm guessing they're releasing some big public vlog a blog sorry um so i'm recording this on the 12th of october i had the meeting today and I'm, oh, I'm allowed to upload this video on the 19th. So in a week's time, I'm allowed to upload this. But I'm recording it now uh, because I, I've got it kind of fresh in my mind. It was a few hours ago, the meeting. It finished about two and a half hours ago. And I've kind of gone over my notes. So I actually did take notes. We weren't allowed to screen cap or record it or anything like that. But I was typing like crazy. Um, and we do have some... Uh, we've got a PDF with some of the latest items um as well so i don't know if i'm going to go over that specifically uh because you know that's quite an in-depth and a lot of those numbers can change anyway what i can do uh, and what i might do is just very briefly uh go over the basic like what the item is what does it do maybe maybe that's worth doing um other than i you know mentioning numbers is much of a muchness because again a lot of it is going to change so the way that i'm going to do this video uh, in the description down below and if you're on I think desktop you should see on the bar on the YouTube play or in the in the description I'm gonna make chapters so chapters are a thing on YouTube that I can uh, put a time kind of frame on a certain topic so if you're not interested in one topic but you're very interested in another feel free to jump around in this video but if you want to watch the whole thing that would be great and all i ask if you guys can like the video and comment your opinion what do you think are you happy sad whatever it may be let me know in the comments below as i would also say it would be not too surprising that if we did have some riot eyes on this video the fact that i was invited to the meeting there were not many content creators invited and I'm making a video about said meeting, it wouldn't be too surprising. Um, so the first thing I do have to say is just thank you for Riot for the opportunity, even though, you know, I don't always see eye to the eye uh, with them. It's nice that they do invite people to see what their perspective is and to ask questions. I I, I don't sometimes ask e easy questions. I, I did the same this year than I did last, that I, I think my questions were maybe some of the most challenging in some areas. Um, or maybe the questions that they didn't exactly want. <laughs> uh, but I think they are important to have every now and then. So that's not a bad thing. Um, so let's quickly go over the three areas of what the changes are. So again, in my notes, the three changes obviously are objective bounties, the new dragons, and new slash updates on items. So the goals that they have for preseason with these topics in mind or these these changes in mind are improving the existing game systems in the game and to excite players. Now, if I had to take one keyword away from the meeting that kept coming up all the time, it was excite. The word exciting, excite, all like that is the point. Riot want to create these kind of crazy, exciting moments um that people will talk about for days after it happens i think that's kind of the idea also to create uh, more tools for allowing uh, losing teams to get back into the game oh yeah yeah objective bounties which will go over and then also respect players investment into our current systems by preserving what players love i personally don't exactly what know what that one meant and at that time, there wasn't a Q&A, so maybe I should have actually asked what that meant. But I don't know what that officially means, uh, because they have changed quite a lot about the game in the last year or two. Um, which isn't technically preserving things, but anyway. Uh, so let's start on topic number one, and I'll say I'm going to go very briefly on all of these topics. The Q&A part, for a lot of you, might be the most interesting part, because that is where I have raised concerns with Riot. I have asked, asked them direct questions, like... Do I think they, there's too much damage in the game? That is one question that I asked them, and I did get an answer. 
That will be at the end of after I've spoken about these three topics. It will be time stamped below if you want to skip to that and whatever. But again, I'd like if you'd watched most of the video, but I'm just letting people know if that's all they want. So let's start with objective bounties. So uh, the idea of an objective bounty is to give a losing team a bit of a chance or more of a chance to get back into the game. Obviously, in the last year or two, we got champion bounties that if a champion goes on a big killing spree uh, or they farm a lot without dying, a bounty will be on their head and you earn bonus gold for killing up to a thousand gold uh, for that bounty. Uh, objective bounties are much the same, but instead of for champions, which by the way, that system will still be in the game. So you'll have champion bounties and now objective bounties, uh, obviously on Baron, Elder Dragon, Dragon, Rift Herald, Outer Turret, Inner Turret and Base Turrets. They will be highlighted on the minimap, uh, you know, which one has the objective and every team member gets the gold, and the gold is split. So for example, if the bounty on Baron is 500 gold, that is split among five players, therefore you get all 100 gold each, is from what I understood from what Riot told me. Uh, the way that it's being calculated, so like how does, a, uh, how does the game know to put a objective bounty on? So there's four categories that it's being calculated, and it is XP lead, uh, gold lead, dragon's lead, and turret's lead. Each of these four areas are given a points value, and the more points that you are in a deficit to the enemy team, the more or the bigger the objective bounty will be, starting at when you're at a five point deficit. They did actually give me the breakdown of what the points were. I didn't note them down. It was very, happening very fast within the meeting. This was just part of the presentation area, and I don't have those slides. We weren't given them. Uh, but I think on average from my memory and it, you know, it, don't quote me and numbers are subject to change. It might have been like, I don't know, it was like one, I get, I don't want to try and say it when it's wrong. So yeah, I'm not even going to try. I can't remember. But when you are on a five point deficit throughout those four different areas, an objective bounty will be in. Um, and you obviously, if you get a tower, if you get whatever it may be, you'll get some bonus gold for your team. As I mentioned, it's split between the whole team. So if you're playing top lane and there's your your team is behind, but you're doing well and you get the outer tower, the inner tower and the base tower, bam, bam, bam. With all that being objective bounties, you'll be giving all of your team gold, not just you individually. So that's the idea. Um, this, I will say, I think it is going to... And what Riot said, it's a way to come back into the game that's not team fight focused, obviously. obviously. Um, this will be very good in, in a way for those split pushing top laners uh, that, again, may win lane in 1v1. Like think of a Fiora, not exactly a team fighting uh, champion. Very good split pushing even in late game. And if a team is doing bad, sometimes as a Fiora, you feel like, oh, I have to go help my team. You know, they're going to they're gonna die or we're not going to gain much, whatever it may be. Well, this is actually given an incentive for a Fiora type champion to go, no, screw it. I'm going to stay top lane because that's my job. And if I do my job well and we have objective bounties on these towers, I am directly giving my team gold by me doing the split pushing job well. So that's the idea. So um, that's that. So I don't want to go into any more detail. There is a, a Q&A question that is about objective bounties, but we'll cover that in the Q&A part. Next up is the dragons. Um, so from what I saw on social media, my comment section, my Twitch stream, my Discord, Reddit, it does seem on average that the dragons, at least one of them in particular, were was the most controversial on the new changes. People on the most part were fairly okay with objective bounties. Um, you know, let's be honest, any change is going to be I think initially seen as a negative, no matter what it is, change people just aren't used to. But the one of these dragons, I think people really disliked, including myself, I must be said. Uh, but the first dragon, Hextech, the lesser of the two evils, I would say. Uh, so just to confirm, Hextech dragon, per stack when you kill it, it gives 5 ability haste and 5% attack speed per stack. If you get the soul for the dragon, it gives you a static shiv-like chain lightning that slows the opponent uh this does true damage it was a very small amount. I, again i think it was true damage and it's a very small amount of damage like basically nothing and of right now again numbers are subject to change the slow uh for melee champions 
for you know if you you're a melee champion you get the slow on somebody with the uh, electric is 55 percent and if you're ranged it goes down to 36 percent but again they might balance those uh, but the bigger thing uh, is the gates so let's just talk about and clarify the gates there is going to be a bunch of gates if the map becomes a hex tech map so there's going to be two gates in your own base that go from your own base to just basically over the first terrain so near the red buff or near the wolf camp that's where you'll be porting to uh, for both teams have will have two on both sides of the map these portals are only one way that you only can go from the base outward into the map you cannot do the other way so if you're trying to escape you cannot run to these hex portals to escape into your base it does not work you only can go from your base outward the other two locations on the on in the game are both direction you can go from either direction and that is over the barren pit and also over the dragon pit and they, they do extend a little bit more range than just over the pit itself but that's basically the trajectory that you'll be doing you can go through either either direction on these and all of these portals have a cooldown on them but it's individual cooldown for you as a player and it's an individual cooldown per portal so for example you both you know your bot lane you you could both leave your base through the same portal um in bot lane and to get to red buff um and you can both use that it's not you know when one person uses it it does not put it on cooldown both people can use it it will go on cooldown for both of you but then both of you as well can go from the behind the dragon pit into like the river um it's not like once you've used one portal all of them go on cooldown it's per it was a lot of peas. It was per player, per portal cooldown, uh, basically. So that is all that. Um, honestly, again, this one, I do think it's a bit gimmicky. But it, all in all, I think it's whatever. It will change the, the kind of the tone of gameplay or give you a bit of strategic choices with the portals. So all in all, I didn't think this one was too bad. Now moving on to the bit more of the Nightmare Fuel Dragon, Chem Tank. Oh, so sorry, Chemtech. Uh, so this one gives you 5% increased damage to enemies per stack. That is based on how much uh, missing health or how much more health the enemy has than you. And then in the Dragon Soul is Scion passive. So it's become a zombie uh, with obviously the health bar burns away in time. So you will die. Like you can't just stay alive. Um, so that's that. Uh, and I also believe they do work kind of together. Uh, so... Obviously, if you have 5% bonus damage, the lower health you are. When you're in the zombie form and you're gaining less health, you'll get the damage buff the lower health your zombie is. And then obviously you'll just die, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, and then the terrain, obviously, upgrade if it's a chemtech dragon map. Uh, it's the camouflage zones. Um, and from what they saw, it it didn't look like it was completely around the blue buffs. It more looked around the wolf area and above the wolf camps and near red buff. So it didn't look like blue because maybe blue is a bit off to the side. I don't know. But yeah, it looked to be around the wolf camp more and in that kind of alleyway between blue and wolves and the red buff in that kind of circle of red buff. Uh, it's a 900 range camo. Um, so it, you you can spot people at a fairly long range. Uh, it's not like they can be right next to you and you can't see them. Uh, but the idea of it, obviously, it's going to add a bit of secrecy running into there and you don't know maybe which direction someone left in if you don't have vision. So there's that. Again, I will answer a question in the Q&A part that I had a bigger concern with this and we'll cover it then. But right now I'm just kind of giving the facts. Next up is the new items. Um, so if I open this document, um, so just to kind of go over very quickly the, the names of everything, again, potential subject to change, but it did look like a lot of them were pretty locked in, but numbers definitely, so, uh, you know, to change. We have Divine Crown Guard, Lunari uh, Vestments, uh, Frostfire Gauntlet, again, worth knowing, you might be like, that's not a new item. Updates are also included in this. Uh, Turbo Kemp Tank, uh, Winter's Approach, Fumble Winter. Uh, catalytic Kropesh, uh, Ravenous Shadow Flame, Cosmic Drive, High Horizon Focus, Demonic Embrace, Seraph's Embrace, 
two embraces, uh, Force of Nature, Knight's Vow, and Abyssal Mask. We also have some rune changes for Lethal Tempo, Glacial Augment, and Omni Stone is getting bye bye, goodbye to Omni Stone. And right now, the placeholder name for the new rune is called First Strike. So let's first go over the new the, the rune changes because they're a little bit easier. So Lethal Tempo uh, is being changed. And what it's becoming, again, numbers subject to change, but gain attack speed for seven seconds when striking at least one enemy champion with each attack. This, this, this effect stacks. And in my notes, the current numbers of this uh where did i actually make note of it i think i did somewhere there yeah um so six is it uh, gaining attack speed up to six times gaining six i think it was like 10 percent uh okay my notes might be wrong basically per stack you're gaining attack speed and once you hit six attacks you get higher attack range and for ranged champions, you get 100 more attack range. And for melee champions, you get 50 more attack range. So that's not the new lethal tempo. So in essence, it's an attack speed steroid that also gives you more attack range. They obviously gave the example that mainly AD carries would like this. Cogmore, Vayne, obviously. But they also said Trindamir might like this, for example, which makes sense. So there's lethal tempo, the update. We now also have Glacial Augment being updated, and this is immobilizing an enemy champion will cause three Glacial Rays to animate, or whatever. Uh, basically, think of Twin Shadows when that used to do the, the Freezy Threes, or whatever the item was called, those two of them. Um, but yeah, three Glacial Rays to go from, uh, well, from them towards you and other nearby champions, creating frozen zones for a few seconds that slow enemies for 40%, and reduce their damage by 15% against your allies, but not including yourself. So obviously this is for a tank. Um, a Sejuani would be perfect with this, for example. So immobilizing an enemy is going to make ice kind of go away from them in three different directions. And on those zones, they will be slowed for 40% if they stay on those zones. And if they're on those zones, I believe their damage goes down by 15% to your allies, but not to you. So that's the new Glacial Augment. And then finally, the new rune that I quite like the sound of. Uh, and Riot basically obviously had Kleptomancy as a rune a couple years ago. They replaced that with Omni Stone. And they said the old Kleptomancy people might be happy about this one, which I, I am. Uh, I could see this becoming an Ezreal rune and a Gangplank rune. Uh, again so this first strike and again they might change the name for this one but damaging an enemy champion with an attack or an ability uh before so if you strike an enemy before they strike you grants five gold and first strike for three seconds which is it causes your attacks or abilities to do 12 percent of extra damage against champions and granting 100% or 70% for ranged units of that damage dealt as gold. What I think this means, and I don't know if it is, because it sounds a little bit broken, and I think this is actually what they actually meant, but this might need some balancing, is you hit an enemy first. Let's say, just give the example, Gangplank. You parlay somebody, kabam! That then procs first strike. For then three seconds, you do 12% extra damage against all champions, which sounds a lot. And in that three seconds, however much damage you deal, you'll get as gold. So if you're Gangplank with crit Gangplank in mid game and you've got two, maybe three items, you parlay them, you do a barrel combo, you ult them and you auto attack with your passive, that's after the parlay, easily a thousand damage. Does this mean you just get given a thousand gold? Because that sounds pretty broken. <laughs> like, I, maybe that's not what it means, or if it is, that needs to be very much tuned. Um, but there's that. So it, it looks to be a gangplank rune, and maybe he does need one because he's been lacking one for a while, like properly. But uh, maybe that needs a bit of fine tuning. 
Uh, now, finally, the, the items. So there's not too many, but I'm just going to go over them very briefly. So Divine Crown Guard is a ability, health, mana, ability, haste item. And this is the uh, anti-burst, anti-assassin mage uh, new mythic. And this is you are safeguarded, reducing incoming damage by 50% and safeguard persists for 1.5 seconds after taking initial champion damage. While you are safeguarded, you gain ability power um, and, the, and the mythic passive of it also is you gain mo movement speed per legendary item and health and it's a 40 second cooldown. Again, numbers subject to change, but basically Riot said is what they want with this item which again, we'll go over like my basic was like, why don't they just nerf the damage? We'll go over why they're not doing that later. But right now, if you're a mage and you're trying to survive against an assassin in mid, it's nearly impossible. And a lot of mages have to rush Zonya. The problem with rushing Zonya is it basically gives you no power in the 1v1. It is just giving you survivability. So one, you can't kill the enemy unless they tower dive you and you use Zonya's obviously. But if you know, you can't kill them properly because you've got lack of damage with Zonyas. And if they go roam, you don't have the confidence to, to follow them because you've just got a Zonyas. And if you build a normal item, like a mythic, uh, like a damage one, it then allows you to get one shot. So, you you know, you, you're then going to die. So you also have to play a bit more passive. That's been the problem with mages most of the season. So this item is trying to make kind of the most and the best of both worlds that it's giving you damage that is 60 ability power base and ability haste and health and mana, which is all good. But when you're actually fighting and you're getting that damage reduction, it's giving you more ability power during the fight. So it's actually making you tanky 50% damage reduction for 1.5 seconds, which doesn't sound like a lot of time, but a lot of assassins do that initial burst and that one shot in 1.5 seconds. It's kind of the answer to the current meta for mid. So this seems quite good. Again, if the root isn't nerfing the damage, this is a very good thing for a lot of mages if you're in a mage versus assassin matchup. Next item is Lunari Vestments, which in essence is the opposite of um, Locket of the Iron Solari. Uh, so obviously Solari is, su is the sun and this is Lun Lunari. Basically is after immobilizing champions or being immobilized yourself, uh, you cause that target and all nearby enemies to repent, increasing the damage they take for t by 12% for 5 seconds. So that is the idea of it is you're a Leona and you go wham bam straight into the middle of 4 people. You do all your AoE and you know, you're immobilizing or you're being immobilized in the middle of a team fight. Well, then all around you, all the enemies around you are taking 12% increased damage by your team because of this item. It seems very strong and it seems a bit like, again, it's, it's trying to make those kind of exciting support engage plays even more exciting. So there's that. So uh, Frostfire Gauntlet, only thing I'm going to mention here is... Um, they're updating it that basically it's taking or dealing damage causes you to uh, deal bonus magic damage per to nearby stuff and attacks create a frost field for 1.5 seconds and deal magic damage to all enemies in the area. Basically like the old frozen gauntlet is kind of what Frostfire Gauntlet's now becoming again in essence. And then Turbo Chem Tank, uh, it still is giving the movement speed. But they're changing it from just being the, the, the Immolate. That's what they're trying to get away from. All three tank items with the Immolate. They're, they're getting away from that. And this one now is Refuel. Moving and dealing damage charges up stacks. And at 100 stacks, your next basic attack deals bonus magic damage to all nearby enemies. And that type of thing. So they're just kind of changing the identity a bit, which is good. We're getting Winter's Approach. Um, and uh, that upgrades kind of like a Mirror Mana. Uh, to Fumble Winter. Uh, and these are for like AP Bruisers that gain bonus health equal to 8% mana. So if you're an AP Bruiser that uses mana, this is going to be great for you. And it probably is also going to be great for Rise. Uh, but immobilizing or slowing Melioni on an enemy champion consumes mana and grants a shield. So there's that item. Uh, we got Catalytic Kropesh. Uh, I didn't 
Oh, wait, that's that one. So this is the one that might be slightly controversial for people. It's an assassin lethality item, and it's refresh. Whenever a champion dies within three seconds of having damaged item, refund 25% of your ultimate's ability total cooldown. That does sound a bit crazy, but what Riot's actually trying to do, and they did explain, they're trying to get out of the mindset of, I assassin, I side lane, I kill people one-on-one. -on -one. They're trying to get into the, the mind frame of, oh no, as an assassin, you can team fight. Um, of, imagine if you, you know, this is refund 25% of your ultimate ability's total cooldown if a champion dies within three seconds of you damaging them. In a team fight, if you damage three or four champions after using your ult and they all die your ult's back up like instantly it's back up in a team fight and then you can use your ultimate again to kill the last person like it's quite a team fight centric so what right want is a saturn's two team fight they don't want them to side lane we get Ravenu, uh, Ravenous Shadow Flame. So this is magic penetration for mages between 10 and 20 magic pen based on the target's current health. Or if someone has just been shielded, it's maximum magic pen from the item, which is 20 on that target. So it's an anti-shield item for mages. Cosmic Drive is getting updated. Nothing major I need to mention. Horizon Focus also now triggers off slows. So that's a, a small little change, but it's going to be a big impact because Riley's also counts for that slow. So that's quite good for a lot of champions. Uh, Demonic Embrace, it, the new thing, convert 2% of your bonus health to ability power. So kind of like a Vladimir passive. So that's going to be, again, good for AP bruisers. Uh, Seraph's Embrace, uh, restore health equal to 40% of mana spent. So this is kind of going back to the old Seraph's Embrace. It's not a shield, but you're restoring health on a certain mechanic. So some people would like that. Force of Nature is getting a bit changed, and Knight's Vow is also getting a bit changed. Um, and also Abyssal Mask. So I don't want to go even over them all. Like It would be a bit tedious to do that, but that's pretty much all that we have so far. I don't know if that's all they're doing. It would actually surprise me if that's all they're doing. But there's that. And now I think we are at the point that we can go into the Q&A. So we've covered everything just kind of saying what's changing. We've said objectives uh bounties dragons runes and items so now we're in the q a part and we're going to start with the big question that i asked now what i'm going to do is i'm going to just read exactly the way that i said the question um because again the way that it was working it was a google meets meeting but the rioters were talking and we were typing uh, just to make it easy so people aren't talking over each other so this was my question uh and I, I asked a, a bunch, by the way, so this is just the first one. Uh, do I feel that with some of the items and new dragons are somewhat treading the line of being champion level mechanics? So Chem Tank Dragon Soul, uh, so Ke like Chem Tank Dragon Soul is Scion passive. Camo zones are, you know, they're a camouflage, so camouflage champions feel less special to why people like playing those champions. Like if you're an Evelyn player, you're like you you're really into the whole camouflage feel, but that now is giving everybody camouflage in those zones does that make you feel a bit meh um in essence this is unfortunately and i will say i the, there was two questions that i really wanted to ask right and get an answer to one of them they did they did answer but unfortunately this was not an answer that i really got so they did give an answer but they didn't answer the question so they basically said um with the, with the uh, they didn't mention anything with the item mechanics but they went the the new dragons are more complex than the first ones. The second iteration is always they want to push the boundaries. Um, and the goal for dragons was to create interesting game state. Um, and yeah, just to, to create a more exciting, interesting game state and to push the boundaries for what a dragon is. Not just to be a stat thing like Inferno that just gives ability power and AD or whatever it may be. It's to kind of create more from dragons. Obviously, that didn't really answer my question of, like, do I feel that they are doing champion level mechanics? Is that healthy or anything like that? They didn't answer it, um, which was a little bit disappointing. Like, maybe if I speak to my Riot partner manager and be like, can you actually see if they can answer directly? Like, do I think they think it's the do? Do they feel it's smart or good to have champion level mechanics as items and dragon stuff now? Maybe I, I'll do that. But yeah, they didn't answer it, unfortunately. Um and again, I whether blame or whatever, like 
they're having a lot of questions thrown at them in an hour and a half period so whether they had an answer for mine or they just didn't want to answer it i don't know again everybody was being really nice by the way so it wasn't like it was a bad thing but they did not answer that question and unfortunately like the same happened last year some people may remember in my meeting last year with riot i asked the question do i feel the uh, the new items are taking away from champion identity and i gave the example of Jin that he's in a mobile glass cannon ad carry but you're now giving him mobility with gale force and again they said no they don't see it as a problem so maybe riot just literally don't see it as a problem so then the, the next big question that i asked uh asked them was um has there been any conversation with toning down the damage of league in general to make especially one shotting less reliable so this is where i actually got a solid answer and I will say, and I think the word might be, I had a bit of an epiphany and I've been very frustrated with League in season 11. And obviously I've not been able to hide that perfectly on videos and stream um, that I do believe the damage is way too high and it has taken away from skill. So the answer is probably not going to be what people like, but my understanding has gone up. And in some ways I am now going to accept the damage and it will help me kind of move on and just embrace the damage so here is the answer they talk about it a lot internally apparently within riot it's a it's a topic that they're constantly talking about they know the damage is high but and this is where some people may not like the answer but it is what it is in essence regional preferences vary a lot and they specifically said China loves high aggression, high damage. So in essence, that is why we have a crazy amount of damage in League. And it's why it's not going to go away. So I'm probably, and I weirdly I kind of left the, that answer and left that meeting pretty relaxed. And I know it's not the answer that I wanted. I was wanting, oh yeah, we know it's really high. We are looking to tone it down. Obviously, they're not going to. But the fact that now I have an actual answer to why the damage has been so high is calming. That like, it's happened. This is why they're doing it. Whether you agree with it or not, that's another thing. But I now have an answer to it. And I, I now know that, I, you know, for a lot of my frustration was holding on to pass League of Legends and be like, maybe they will tone the damage down. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe they'll revert it. They're not going to. They like, just flat out. They're not going to. So this is actually going to help me move past my frustration because I know it's not going to be changed. So it's weird in some ways that I know it's not the answer we wanted or I wanted, but it's actually helping my mental move past it. So in essence, that is why the damage is so high. That is why these crazy dragons are here is because... The biggest region, the most, the region that Riot needs to please the most, the biggest player base, probably, well, easily the player base that makes them the most money, etc. They love high damage. They love crazy things. They love, like, the crazy dragon moments. They, they love that. That is what they play the game for. And that's obviously what Riot is doing. Um... I would say, the only, the only counterpoint I would say to that is League arguably, like... I'm again I'm just speculating here I didn't actually answer the question but I'm guessing the player number has gone down this year judging just on everything on social media and like so many people seem to have quit the game especially like even content creators who make money on the game have been quitting like crazy a lot of them um I'm guessing the player number at least in the west has gone down uh, maybe not in China and that's maybe why they're doing it I don't know but um the peak of League of Legends for a lot of people the glory days of the, the game were like season three and four and five etc that's when the game wasn't crazy crazy and china was still playing it a lot then so i i don't know what has made it that way but at least we have an answer to it now so there we go so that is why the damage is nuts and that's why we have one shots that's what that region enjoys um the next question i did not actually ask but i, I thought it was a good one so i thought i'd note it down for you is do riot feel that uh, adding objective bounties will potentially add more toxicity to the game due to more potential mistakes being made uh, to enable people making comebacks. Um, so, like, for example, you're winning a game, you're really far ahead, and there's a thousand gold bounty on a Baron. The enemy team just man managed to steal it, so they get the Baron buff, and then they also get that thousand gold bounty, obviously 200 gold each. 
It doesn't sound like a lot, but it can give that momentum swing, the gold and the bounty uh, and, and the buff, sorry. What Riot said was they are actually expecting some sadness from the community when it comes to objective bounties, but in the form of the winning team uh, or the, the team that was winning, I should say. Um, that basically if you're leading a game and you suddenly lose to a catch up or a comeback mechanic, you're obviously not going to like it. You're like, dude, I lost just because there's there's an objective bounty in the game. God damn it. So they are aware that that will exist. But they are also making the point on the flip side, although you will be sad when you lose a game due to an objective bounty catching the enemy team back up, you will also win games where objective bounties help you. Maybe that makes it kind of pointless as a whole, I would say, because it kind of just seems to be evening out. So what's the point anyway? But that is what they're saying is, yes, they are expecting a little bit of oof moments uh, from, you know, oh, my jungle Mr. Smite and they got a big bounty and they got the dragon buff or something. But they're expecting it, but they are looking, they're going to continuously look at balancing it, continuously looking at making sure it's tweaked enough that the winning team should still win the game. It's just a chance for the enemy team to make a comeback. A chance. Not a guarantee, it's a chance. Uh, my next question that I asked um, was, when it comes to testing with PBE and then on to preseason, what will you define as a success uh, to implement the new Dragons officially? Um, and they basically said, and it kind of confirms, which I, I kind of knew already, uh, PBE, they don't really value anything when it comes to balance. Uh, they never really have. Um, the player numbers on there is very low. The, the player skill level is very low. So all they, they seem as a success when it comes to PBE is when they implement it, it doesn't break the game. It doesn't crash the game. It, it's more that type of thing is, um, you know, that that's the type of thing that Riot is looking to do. Um, then for the actual testing element, um, they, what do they say? So as a success, and obviously what I would say is creating a well a game studio that's implementing their own changes gets to set their own boundaries for success if that makes sense it's not like the community has said if you do these changes this is how we'll deem it a success riot is doing the changes and then riot also de deems what a success is yeah um but they say to create new interesting game states and players can identify when one dragon makes an impact when another would not. And players are excited about the change and adjusting their play with the new dragons. Another rioter also kind of stepped in and said they will be doing feed uh, surveys, feedback surveys, etc. as they've always done. And they'll be looking into those. Uh, they will be, I'm sure, looking at videos like this and seeing what the reaction has been. Obviously, you know... The announcement video that Riot made initially, I think, I think at this point in time has a negative dislike ratio. Um, so I don't know if they're going to take that into account at all. Uh, but, you know, without sounding salty in any way, in the grand scheme of things, if what by what their own, if, if the if the region of China likes the changes, it sounds like it's going to happen. Um, it, that just seems what Riot is moving towards when it comes to balance. So. E, it, whether us on EU West or North America or whatever, maybe I don't know if we can make uh, an impact to that degree. Anyway, so I, I don't know. Um, but what I would say is players can identify when one dragon makes an impact and another would not. I think that's a pretty, again, like I mentioned, is Riot is making their own terms of success. That seems to be a pretty easy one for them to deem as a, a success because of the the strength of these two new dragons like you're being able to do so much more with these two new dragons than you can with infernal whether that's a good thing that's to be seen that that's not necessarily a good thing maybe champion you know maybe the game should be more about champion strength rather than dragon strength i don't know but um yeah so there's that and then two a last two um was someone again these last two i did not ask but someone said there is a problem with the game becoming more and more com complex and not beginner friendly. Do do Riot see that as a problem? And one rioter actually said we actually do see it as a problem, um, but they have to kind of weigh up the two sides. 
the current players who are used to the game, who get used to change fast, who already play the game, already invest into the game, and then the new players that are you going to please players that may not play in the long run? Are you going to please players that, you know, they, they're not current players? So there's always kind of a weighing up of which one do you balance for more? And basically what Riot said was the better thing that they will do. They want to add more complex systems like these dragons. But what they want to potentially look into, into the future is to help players, new players, learn the game easier. Learn the game quicker by more tools that they can develop themselves. So they want more complex things. They also do care about new players because, yes, the learning curve of League is only getting steeper. Um, but maybe... They don't want to, they don't want to, you know, sacrifice the their developing um, over new players, basically. And then the final one was just someone said, how do they kind of cross the line or where does the line exist when it comes to creating something new or doing a rework? And they just did a very basic example with Malphite um, that, you know, Malphite's very old, but would they do a rework of him? Probably not. Why? Because he is a very dedicated player base. Um, obviously, if you asked this question many years ago before the Aatrox rework, that's probably, you know, the Aatrox rework is very different. Even the Gangplank diff has bigger differences than the reworks they do now. But it does seem more reworks nowadays are very much more akin to an update rather than a rework, I would say. Um, like the, the Mundo one, it is literally Dr. Mundo. It's just a little bit fresh paint version of Dr. Mundo. And I don't think that's a bad thing, but it was a yeah. That that's basically the answer is they 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 don't want to take the identity away from champions because they have a core player base. That for some of these players, that is their one reason they play the game. Imagine if you're a, a one trick Malphite player, two thousand games this season, and then they suddenly change Malphite completely. You're gonna feel very lost. You're gonna feel probably upset, and you'll probably quit the game. So they don't really want to do that anymore or ever again. So there we go. That is the big Riot meeting. I think this video went quite long, uh, unsurprisingly. As I said, there'll be timestamps throughout if you want to kind of go back and listen to something else. But what I got from it was... <sighs> what, what, what would I say, my summary? Riot is looking to make the game more exciting by their definition. And that definition seems to be more crazy moments, high damage, and a lot of gold income and fast games like maybe the, the you know fast games seem to be quite a big point they, they i think they really like that roughly 25 minute average game time nowadays you know a couple seasons ago it wasn't that you know we had 40 plus minute game average times so that has obviously come down and for that to come down the damage in theory does need to be high so there's that uh, i've also come at you know a weird i've i've made peace that we're not getting toned down damage at least for quite a while um season 11 obviously definitely not season 12 also seems to just going to be the same high damage and i think even though it's frustrating it's it's kind of made me at peace with kind of fighting that point so much because i was just clinging on to it so i'm just going to embrace it and hopefully be a lot calmer about the crazy damage because i've just got to accept that's what league has become well, again, whether that's good or bad, I don't know. But at least it's just kind of one of those things that I can kind of accept and now embrace and move on. But that is it. Let me know what you guys think of all the changes. I pretty much went over everything in essence we had. Uh, but I, you know, finally just say thank you very much to Riot for inviting me uh, and the other creators and, and people that, you know, work with Riot here or there. Um, this is now for the second year in a row that I got invited to this meeting. And hopefully I'll be invited for the ones to come in the next few years. Um, my only, I would say, if any of the writers are um, listening to it, the only bit of feedback I potentially would give um, is it might be a weird way to, to, to phrase it in a way, but maybe if Riot in the meeting basically asked us some questions because it's, it's, it's mainly a one-way thing that we're asking them questions. It would be actually kind of interesting for them to have questions that they may want to, to ask us. You know, it, 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 it's kind of like breaking the ice because if they ask, like, who actually likes them, I would have said no, like, but it's it's really awkward to bring that up because you're talking to the people who are directly doing these changes. And I don't want to be rude 
you know i don't i don't want to kind of you know they've been spending months doing all this work i don't want to be the one going hey is is this is there any chance for this not to happen but if they invite just the, the question of like do you like the change and if i go no then we can have a bit more of a chat of why i don't like the change there isn't really that it's it's more of us asking them than it's it's not so much a conversation so that's my only feedback if anybody's actually watching from riot which there's a good chance they are uh but you know thank you very much for it though like a lot of game companies i imagine do not do this and you guys have gotten a lot better with communication from years ago and that's great so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I'd be actually very interested to, to hear your opinions. And as a let's actually do it. If you made it to the end of the video, uh, and if you hear this, anyone that actually leaves their opinion, um, let's give ten riot point a uh, ten ten dollars worth of riot points away. There we go to uh, someone random. I'll just random generate a name like a pick or uh, from a comment. But you have to leave your opinion about what you think about it so let me know all that down below but please do like the video be a subscriber if you're not and i'll see you guys next time goodbye Call down the reckoning to bring back hope and peace restore our glory to live forever bring down the dark regime